Thank you, Cecile. Good afternoon. I welcome all the panelists with us here today, as well as all those who are joining us or who are watching us through this webinar. I know that we just mentioned that biographies of the panelists are available. You can click to them in the chat. I will also mention their names anyways, uh, in case some of you are not yet able to access the bios. With me today, we have uh, Miss Islanda Micheline Astuel. She is a political analyst and she works with Tetkole in Haiti. This is all that I will say because, as you know, many of you know that Tetkole Ti Paysan is a peasant organization that has been around for more than five, 35 years. And one of the special leaders of the organization was uh, Father Jamais Vincent, who was assassinated. With us here, we have Professor Georges Edi Lucien. He, he was educated in Haiti. He teaches uh, social science and mathematics at the State University of Haiti. And now uh, he's a professor uh, abroad. He's studying at the... He studied at the University of the Antilles in Guyana and the University of Quebec in Montreal. He's a professor of history at the State University of Haiti. What else also is Michelle Austin Pamis. She's a partner at Austin Pamis Nourish Weeks. She, she is a lawyer and she practices uh, right now uh, mostly on uh, businesses, she represents and at the commercial level and also at the level of uh, real estate. She uh, is also a uh, member of Miami Health Choice of Dade County. A and she's here because she is a board member of AFDE. Um, she will speak with to us on the topic of the role of her role as a representative of AFDE. Um, also, we have Willine Pierre, who was born and lives in Wanaman. She studied at the Uni Autonomy University of Santo Domingo in the DR. She is an engineer and she works very closely with those who are working in the canal. She practically supports the community in what I meant, particularly the farmers who are uh, who would like to have water to be able to irrigate their plant, their lands, um, to plant. Well, Michel Sucar does not even need an introduction. He is a historian. He's a professor. He's someone who has been training many youth in Haiti for many years. He is a consequential activist who has been fighting for many years during the Valier regime to bring democracy in the country. In many books that he wrote on the history of Haiti, the politics of Haiti, and how you can bring together the history and the politics. I think it's an honor that he is uh, speaking with us today and so that he can give us an analysis and also historic politics about what's happening in the country today. So thank you so much to all of you who are here. We will be presenting today uh, and asking the questions in Creole so that we can facilitate the people who speak Creole so that they can understand fully. And secondly, uh, this is the second panel that we're having. The first panel was mostly with people who were panelists from the universities. They were professors, people who have who've done analysis. The second panel is pretty much a mixture of professors, um, practitioners, and also activists. This will facilitate many of these past panelists so that they can feel comfortable to speak today in whatever language they feel most comfortable. Some of them can speak in English, but we are going to have this session in Creole. And also, this will facilitate those that are watching and listening to us in Haiti. And um, with that, I thank you very much that you're taking the time to be able to participate in the second panel of the Haitian Studies Association. We think that with all the expertise that we have, we could spend a good two hours to have a solid analysis on the reality of Haiti. 
as we know, uh, you are all experts in your field, which means we could spend two hours speaking about topic about a topic without getting tired. This is why I would like to ask you to please summarize all your interventions so that we can um, have more discussions and um, more so that we can have more active participations. So I have a first question, but before we pose the questions, we're going to ask the panelists to each present themselves for about two minutes to say uh, what they're doing and what they're working on. And um, after they've presented themselves, I will ask the questions. I will go in the order that I presented the panelists. I would like to ask Islanda if she could uh, maybe speak for two minutes about herself. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Islanda Micheline Adjuel. I am happy to be with you. I'm a member of Tetcole Tipez Haitien, and I'm in the North Department, particularly in Plaisance commune, commune. And I'm here in Port-au-Prince for a little while, and I work, um, well, the work that I do in the organization is, well, I grew up in the organization. My mom still works in the organization. It's a patrimony, it's a heritage for me. In terms of work, I represent Ted Coulé in La Via Campesina. I represent the coordination of the youth committee. And I also um, do uh, uh, trainings and I work mostly on the question of gender equity. And I do um, advocacy for food sovereignty. Right now we're working on a safe agroecology method program. And we're also coordinating in terms of capacity with Ted Kole, Tipeza. And I also work on projects, for example, with three organizations, um, which are part of Via Campesina, uh, which is um, Mouvement Paysan Papay, National Congress of the Paysan Papay Movement. And um, these are the organizations that are part of Via Campesina. And we also work in partnership with PAPDA. Um, so this is based a fusion of all these uh, work that we do in terms of advocacy for the peasant family agriculture that will give us some what the food self-sufficiency that we're looking for so that we can actually be sovereign in terms of food security. Overall, that is who I am, Micheline, um, as well. I have a family and I have a son and I'm married. That's all I can say about me. Thank you. Thank you, Islanda. Hey, Professor George Edlutian. Well, I am Georges Lucien. I'm a professor. I work at the State University of Haiti. I actually teach at the Ecole Normale Supérieure. I teach at Kiskea University, and I'm currently a, currently I'm at the California University, where I'm a visiting scholar. In terms of the subjects that I work on. My focus is mostly on the American occupation of Haiti from 1915 to 1934. And I specialize in urban history. I also work in my, on Miami, the transformation of Miami in the period of the efforts in terms of the internalization of Miami. I work on the territorial recomposition related to globalization. I work on topics of the Northeast in terms of the neoliberal politics, where they are replacing agricultural production uh, with manufacturing machineries. My most recent work focused on migration and particularly critiquing how foreign Haitian authors work on immigration. More or less, those are the things eh, that I work on. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Eddie. I will ask Ms. Mrs. Michelle Osten Pamias to present herself. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Osten Pamias. I'm a lawyer. I actually work in the South of Florida. I am here today to speak about the Haitian American Foundation for Democracy, which is AFDE. The organization has a mission to mobilize all the organization, national organizations, so it can re really promote the work that's really working for human rights, democracy for Haiti, and social inclusion for all. Since we started about three years ago, we started to have different dialogues with different actors to include 
the State Department, the members of Congress, uh, Congress of the U.S., and also growing our relationship within the country. The first thing that interested us was the Montana project because we thought that it was a really good model, a, gov a governance model that we could support, especially in a period that is very difficult where the Prime Minister Ariel Henry was the president, the Prime Minister, and Parliament. We are trying to find a model that we saw that the Montana could, could work. So we talked with them. By the time we got into communication with different sectors, religious sectors, the private sector, and also we're talking with the Lavalas. We started to really speak with different people and the members of the diaspora. We were trying to see how they can work together and unite. As we began all those dialogues um, throughout the years, now that what's happening is that where there's a lot of this unrest in, in Haiti and there and where they were trying to find a different model, they invited us to participate in those discussions and also to facilitate the discussion between the actors that are in Haiti and those that are in the US. And, and that we're trying to work together. It really was where we went deep in this project now, I think we've been working so much that I almost neglect my own work on a regular basis so that I can actually work with people that are trying to get a transitional government for Haiti. And I'm working with them. I was even at the meeting that CARICOM just held. At, and every day, that's what I'm working those days. I'm really watching the evolution of the issues. I mean, uh, the situation up and now, it's not still clear because the government that we're actually building every day, we're trying to see how we can finalize the proposal. But now we're not able to do that. Everyone that's actually gathered to, together on this topic, they're all working together still. And one thing that we know, it's that whether you're in Haitian, you're Haitian here or in Haiti, they're looking for one with good faith. What they're looking for is a better Haiti, a transitional government that will not include gangs nor people that are actually viol a, violating the country. A government that's going to bring us to an election that is really secure, liberal, and progressive, and we have and have the security in the country. Now, what I would say is that uh, to get a presidential council in Haiti, we would need to have security. Otherwise, they would not be able to enter the country. Um, Prime Minister uh, Henry was not able to protect a, a, the country. He could not protect himself and could not even return to the country. The chief of police could not protect himself or prevent the burning of his own home. The most important need is a question of stability so that the country can function. Thank you very much. Hey, hold your thoughts, hold your thoughts. Now we're going to come back to you. We, now we're going to ask Mrs. Wildlin Pierre if she can present herself. Uh, Wildlin, you're muted. Uh, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, all the panelists present with us. And the ladies that I just met uh, now, uh, Professor Suka and George uh, de Lucien, of, uh, of friends and, and my brother. It's a pleasure for me to share this panel with them. Uh, Mr. Dr. Dr. Francois Pierre-Louis is uh, my fellow townsman, right? You are, you are from what I met too? Oh, we missed each other. It's a pleasure to share this panel with you. My name is Whitlin Pierre. I am an architect by trade. I am a human rights activist and I'm an eco-citizen. I'm concerned about the theme of ecology. I was the department director of the environmental ministry. I worked as adjunct director for five years and became director for six months. Since I participated in a social movement in Wanamed with the civil society, we saw the necessity to raise our voices to protest in the name of our people in the in the Dominican in, in the with. Dominican Republic, who I think are being treated in any human way. We wanted the government to negotiate and discuss for us, but 
when the, the, the state came, they are the one, they, they opened back the, It, they opened back uh, the border, which was November 26, uh, 20, 2022, November 27. I resigned from the environment, environmental ministry because I did not want to be part of this administration, which allowed me to more time to conduct more social movement activity in my community. I think that I might have met Mrs. Islanda previously. I think that we participate in a forum where we were defending the rights of peasants in Savan Olet. And where in, in Gondon decided that they have the rights of property and not the uh, peasant, the peasant who inherited the land as survivor of the Tupuru mass massacre. A group of people were trying to take the land from the peasants who led uh, this fight together, and I was happy to meet you then. You came from far to fight with the peasants. It's really all these struggles that led me to the canal fight. When the fight about building the canal surged, I was already defending the peasants' causes and those who needed water to plant. A, uh, you told me not to speak too fast. Okay, Miss Woodlin, I, I would like to ask you to hold on to them and I will come back to you. And this is what led me to the canal. Professor, now, no, excuse me, it's, it's Professor Suka. Uh, we'll say good, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I thank you for the invitation. I don't have much to say. Those are the things that Francois already mentioned. We write books publish uh, the people's book. We do a lot of conferences in Port-au-Prince in Haiti and the diaspora. And uh, and Whitley never stopped asking me to come to when I met. What would I say in these few days with the situation that has happening in Haiti is incendiary. We work uh, with certain families where we, can, we call lost remote areas. We try to see if they can find protection and help them to move to other areas and try to develop some sort of resistance. This, is, this work is uh, extremely difficult where we're living the suffering of those people all the time. And this is why I accepted to participate in this debate so that I can share with you all what I live with these people. So that I say, what I say on the mic, I can I can I can be a voice for them. Thank you, Professor Suka. We have Mrs. Madam. We have Madam Parmias who's going to leave us uh, soon. I'm gonna start the question with her before she. Madam Parmias. The group of Montana and other organizations that uh, give the international whatever solution that is proposed has to be an, a, a Haitian solution. In your opinion, what is a, I think for the solution that are being proposed by I, by the Haitian, the Haitian has to come together and bring forth a plan. And and when they come up with that plan, and the international will support it. There's no. We have a global economy. There's no one. Haitian cannot be working by themselves. The idea is, the Haitian will bring their own solution. Montana came with a, a Haitian solution, but fast forward, we have a. Uh, that the international judge project a, that was not expensive enough, that wasn't big enough. In other words, they would have to have some sort of opposition. They would have together uh, a group of diver divergent ideas, people with divergent ideas, so that it can really be a real consensus. The, we had a proposal that came from four different sectors, including Montana, that requested to have five council members. It went to CALCOM as the referee. Then there were 
six other proposition from different groups from several sectors. I don't know if one was better uh, than the other. Capri Caricom has uh, was the mediator. It decided uh, that if we had so many proposals, let's combine them together so that the Haitian will put themselves together and agree on one of them. We have a question up to now that um, it, all the, the Haitian sectors on the table that are discussed, can they bring themselves together and come with a proposal? So to this day, it's not clear. A lot of things are going on in the radio, on the internet. The reality is the members are going to make up the final group and the final group is not yet done. We're going to ask Ms. Ilanda, Ms. Ilanda to respond to this question. Uh, what I can say, a solution, what does that mean? It's a solution that requires that we work in a consultation in uh, with a consensus that is very big. It opens to all the sectors of the national life. It's true. It's not all the structure we agree on, but it's something very complex. That means there is a fight that needs to happen first. One of the things that we think first it's the the fight of ideology. If it's so we can break the dominant idea. When we start to work on those ideas and break them, will that will lead us to a clearer ideology. The second would be institutional politics. That means looking into the state, the government that will offer us uh, a new perspective, a solution that would look like uh, how to we rebuild the state uh, that will be uh, made for us and for us. It, so it doesn't have to be under the boots of the imperialist powers. A state uh, or government that will fight for the nation, for uh, its people, and one that would uh, fight for the nation. One of the things that we should not fall into the trap of people in in that trap where there are people they are they are not they are anti-government. Not anti-government. We are against the current model of government. We have worked to see how can build a govern a gov a model of government that will work for most what the different sectors of the national life are doing. We would say no to mismanagement, no to the, to, uh, to dictatorship. We need to build our own government model based on all the battles such as the Battle of the Cacos, the Battle of the Peasants, uh, since the Maronage period, which gave us 1804, the, the revolution. I think we have to reconnect, reconnect with that model of uh, battle, and we can go back to our memory and see where we were that brought us to our independence. And today, what lesson we have learned, and can we learn so that can we can build a new government that will bring up our history as and our identity as people? If I understand correctly, you're not in agreement with what's going on right now. It, from what I can say, the Haitian actors have already addressed that. If we're looking at the Montana Accord, which which is the first one that was proposed, uh, what we what they're doing right now, they're pulling different elements that were proposed by the Montana Accord already. For example, the concept of the presidential college was brought up by the Montana Accord first. We said clearly that we had to break ties with those people that were involved in corruption. In, like the petro Caribe issue, those those people in drugs, uh, so that they don't bring those people back to us. This is what we said. They just reformatted the same concept and the same element from the accord. They come up with something else that we don't agree, we won't agree. It, it is the same of the U.S. military occupation under the disguise of the Kenyan troop that they're signing. 
we want to be clear, we against that. The consequences of that, and it's, the history is still there. We, we're not reinventing the will. We are used to working together. We can continue to work to go together. We need to look for a solution for our people. They should not impose a mass solution on us. Oftentimes they propose the solution, they impose it on, on us, and they are the ones who have to bother us and they are the ones who have bought Thank us you, uh, Professor Lucien. I was thinking of the question of the Haitian concept. There are many contexts. If we look at the 20th century, we always have these contexts where we ask for Haitian to sit down together. When they say Haitians, if they it, it doesn't mean that the, because the person is born in Haiti and has a Haitian passport. In those moments, we are in the situation where there are other there are two projects. One project that goes with the transition of opportunity or a transition that will continue. In 2021, when they said the, for Haitians to collaborate, that involved the Haitians that agreed for the transition of continuity, we could look at in 1929, 1930, uh, when we fought against the uh, U.S. occupation. There are people that were against the occupation, but also those who themselves were in a position of opportunity. We're going to see there were people who needed um, continuity, like Jacques Goumet, Julie Boyle, Fils. All those people, they would be repressed. Um, they sort of, uh, it, it's this sort of uh, a continuity that was there even after the departure of the American soldiers. Um, In 1986, when they say Haitian come together, it's the philosophical and ideological question. If in the 1929, we rose up against the occupation, we're going to replicate this in 1986 during the dictatorship. In terms of the PHTK, we had a loss of political sovereignty. In 2011, the Clintons imposed Martelly, uh, then Ariel Henry, Within the same period, we lost our economic sovereignty. The movement Vive Campe in July came about because of the uh, February 25th, 2018, the IMF imposed new rules on the Haitian government to stop fuel subsidies due to electricity. There are other factors that are characteristics to this period. We are against administrative sacking, corruption, in the social movement, in the low-income neighborhoods, for example, those people, they're losing their civic and political rights to protest. Like the people from La Saline, they protested in this um, October 17, 2018 uh, uh, manifestation. Later, in November 13, 2018, 26 days later, there were massacres. When they're talking about Haitians getting together in 2021, this is where Haitians will begin a transition of separation, of rupture, meaning they will cut all ties with all the loss of political sovereignty, uh, food sovereignty, economic sovereignty, and um, to stop preventing the low-income communities from protesting and making demands. Another question for Haitian to Haitian. Um, in Latin America, those who are registered in the transition of continuity, they call them brokers, international brokers. Although there are many folks that are invested in those types of activities that are not Haitians, it's a well, it's a philosophical, ideological question. And it is uh, a political question when when um we ask the Haitian to come together, it's to come to a consensus to break the ties. It is not Washington uh, that can give us a president. When we look at the profile to be part of a presidential council, 
it's not new. It reminds us of 1915 when the Americans were preparing for the Haitian elections. The Secretary of State sends a letter to the U.S. Haitian representative stating that everyone who wants to be a president in Haiti, um, they have to know that the U.S. will be in charge of controlling the ports and the customs. It's not something new. Um, remember in the elections of uh, 2011, uh, Mrs. Clinton came to Haiti and met with the two last candidates. Um, although Michel Motelli was not one of the two, but they still installed him anyways. And he would start, um, she reviewed the profile uh, and she decided Michel Motelli will start the administration and sees that this was not in the context of Mrs. Maniga. You will see that Mrs. Maniga appeared during the last question of the Piastika. Another question is, we would like to pose is why is that when we had the proposition for the transition of rupture previously, the Americans and the core group were against it? And why today they are agreeing to it? This is a fundamental question. There are two elements of um, uh, hypothesis. The Piastrika and the core group did not have any interlocutors to represent them as they were in a weak spot looking at the presidential council. When they look um, at red, the folks from the red were spokespersons for core group. Even if they send someone like um, Michel Dupuis in the forefront, well, uh, December 21st, there is civil society and others in the group as they quickly restructured themselves. Now, the, the second um, important element is that the gangs are becoming more aggressive as a counterpower preventing social movements. Um, in, for example, if you look at the Latin America during the Sandinista revolution, there was a counterpower from the Americans in Honduras. Um, in in contrast um, with Haiti, if there is a progressive government that will emerge, the gangs are placed in Haiti as the counterpower. If there are initiatives that are um, in favor, that are not in favor of the core group or the local oligarchs, then we're going to have problems and the gangs are already there. Like uh, one uh, person said earlier, um, I have the impression that they proposed the presidential council. They agreed. But the content, the structure, is that there are a lot of people that were taking or talking for for the U.S. from 2011 to today, who have ravaged, as we are witnessing, where everyone lost their right to circulation and their rights to housing and their rights to speech and protest. If people are uh, now have the possibility to subscribe to a transit to a transition of rupture. Um, thank you, Professor Lucien. We can come back to these points. Professor Sukar, do you agree with this opinion that there is a Haitian solution that is in the making? Well, I should tell you first that whatever the solution that will come up, we have to watch out for the hypocrisy. The same words, same expressions that are hidden behind these statements. When we Haitians uh, said we want a Haitian solution, we bring together all the propositions that can be good for Haiti and the people of Haiti. But the, the international community, when they say Haitian has the, to find a solution to their problem, it's a hypocritical game uh, because they hide behind those two sentences to hide their culpability. Yes, 
many Haitians are guilty of what happened, but Haiti does not manufacture weapons. All the firearms that are coming to Haiti, they're coming from the U.S. through the Dominican Republic, uh, via contraband, through other ports in other coastal places. Um, even when the Haitian state could change the situation, um, do they have the capacity to do so? No, they don't have it. They don't have the means. Do they have the means to block the flux of uh, the flow of arms? No, they do not have the means. Do they have the means to block uh, the flow of cocaine traffic uh, in the human trafficking, kids trafficking, organs trafficking? No, they don't. What is happening in Haiti is a transnational crime. And the international community, particularly the U.S., are heavily involved and should be responsible for this. We cannot go only with the philosophy and ideology that we are the only ones that can come up with the solution to be proposed because we know what's best for us. That's true. But what means do we have? As it stands, we have a weak state. We have very scarce economical means. We really have to address all those aspects you brought up. On one hand, there are those who agree to defend the interest of Haiti. However, we have to constrain the real culprits and local disciples. And then we have to constrain the U.S. to block the traffic of weapons. We have to constrain them to really combat drug trafficking. Not controlling it, combat the drug trafficking. They have to make this their priority to stop the drug trafficking, to stop the children trafficking and organ trafficking and everything else. One word, the expression may be pretty, but it might be hiding the hypocrisy. You are already trapped and I'm going to make money on the blood of the Haitian people by selling weapons, by trafficking kids' organs, by trafficking cocaine. I know you you can't resolve the problem. They'll say, find a solution amongst Haitians to get together and figure it out. But they know that deep down, you can't. Not only that, you are surrounded by powerful enemies. Those people, they are many other accomplices and traitors within them, then they tell you to find your Haitian solution. You don't put them on the table to make them to be part of the solution because they are at the base of the problem. And you let them off the hook, yet with critical, cynical, criminal game continues. Naturally, some people will think that, given the situation, they will find other global alliances, but we must not lie to ourselves. Politics is a balance of power. In this context, we are not at that point. For example, the Dominican Republic is at this point where they can expel Taiwan and allied with China. You have not reached this level of political moves yet because the government that we have today is nearly non-existent. So when addressing this question and when they tell you it must be a Haitian solution, you have to pause, you have to take pause and remain calm to address the question with a pragmatic approach. We have to repair the culp we have to repair this culpability of those responsible, those who are guilty, people that are inundating Haiti with weapons, with ammunition, with bullets, foreigners and Haitians alike. Those people, we need to block them one way or another. Those who are committing these transnational crimes are me in terms of Haitians who have a dream for our country. Are we able to have the means to block them and fight against them.
These are the questions we need to ask to see how we're going to fight them. Thank you, um, Mr. Sugar. Uh, please remember to speak a little slower when you're speaking so that we can facilitate the, the interpretation uh, in English for those who are not understanding Creole. I will ask the next question to Professor Architect Engineer, Madame Woodlin Pierre. The question I have for you is, the Presidential Council has representatives of several political parties who could not work together before CARICOM intervened. Do you think that they will be able to work together now? And what will it be? What would it take to keep this momentum? So I think that we are now at this historic crossroad as a people in terms of who we are. This dynamic where we are in destitute of everything that we could say to go close to this constitution. We realize that it is in this cacophony that we are, it is not possible. What is possible now is really the sacrifice that the Haitians have to do for Haiti. The sacrifice for those people that are present, that are bringing themselves to the forefront. They would say today, we will never again go down that low. We're going to go back up this hill and we're never going down that level where we are today. Yes, today the council has representatives. We know people that we've always seen, like Professor uh, uh, Lucien just said, as Professor Lucien just said, these are people who actually brought us where we are today. Um, can they really bring solutions? Well, I don't think they are the only ones who can bring solutions. I don't believe in exclusion. Of course, excluding people now, um, because all these groups of people that actually brought us to this point where we are right now, we don't think that they're the ones who can bring the solutions. I think that the larger consensus that we're talking about is really big because it cannot be just a concept of what we're thinking. And okay, we have some people who are representing this concept and we're galvanizing with that around this concept. We can, we, we kind of say the same thing in the attitudes we don't, they don't change. And um, we need to actually move forward today in all sectors, Haitians in all sectors, all colors. We cannot be in this duality where we are right now. We cannot be with people up and people down in color. We don't have to make this distinction. We need Haitians. We need Haitians who can stand up straight on their spine. And then Haitians know who they are as a people, who know where they come from. Um, knowing which descendants, descendants of whom we are, that really would say that the fight that brought us out here, it was not easy. It was from the time that when we really had to go beyond ourselves, we did have, they have one objective, it's freedom, so that we can have the real freedom as a mother of all countries everywhere. Today we are here, we have the obligation, we have the engagement so that we can write a different page of history. It is not a question of party or political party and what interest that I'm gonna have. What's happening is that who we're gonna put here and then actually fill their pocket. And then next week we comes and we say, bring them down. And then another group of people are protesting and then people saying that they have to leave and we're gonna call them out. And then another group, keep coming, and then we keep going over and over. Just like these panelists were saying, we have to stop this hypocrisy. We have to put a lot of solution on the table so that we can fix the responsibilities. The people that are guilty, they cannot come here and say that they're the ones who are going to get us out of this problem because they had time. Many decades have passed to make these changes, and today we're going through this problem. So we don't need political parties or ideologies um, of one party uh, to advance us. We need the ideal of the fathers of the nation together. Um, we can say from there, we're going to say Haiti first. There were countries that were worse than us after the, the Second World War um, the Germans, for example, they were occupied one part by Russia, one part by the U.S., and they said never again. They're not going to go that low. And Germany was the first economic power in Europe. 
um, there's lots of example. After the Second World War, they got out of their situation and you have uh, Liberia, we have Angola, um, we have many other countries. Um, we we have models. It means that we cannot lose hope. This is the time for Haitians that are consequential in Haiti and abroad. This space is giving this uh, this space is giving me the opportunity to speak to people everywhere to all these Haitians. When I see that, I see the love they have for their countries. I meet people who are competent, who can serve their country. However, there is a group of people in this country who decided that they don't want them in the country because they were mediocre and they feel like they have to always be there. Some people want to create the condition to make the space repugnant so that they can get us out. And um, there is Haitians uh, in the diaspora, uh, actually kids in France, that are not born in Haiti. They're saying, you know, they want to go back home. And I said, home where? They said, Haiti is my home. Um, it means that there are Haitians who really believe in Haiti, who love Haiti. And you know, some of these people, they're giving, they're not going to give us the space. It's time for us to go on to the underground to show them. And we should show them that it's not for, it's for us. It's also for the children of the land. It's not just for us. who People who love the land, who want to see the great nation reclaim its place in the world. Thank you, Madame Pierre. Islanda, do you think that the representative of the political parties who could not work together, that they can actually start to work together now and um, they'll be able to work because they have a plan? So in this discourse uh, that, uh, so there is this discourse that we are really counter, that we have to really counteract. There is this notion that we could not work together and CARICOM um, is making us come on the table. There's a lot of panelists who said that, but I'm not going to go back to that, what was already said. There are many initiatives that I could say that the Haitians brought up to say, here's what we can do Um uh, here's what we cannot do. I'm going to give you an example without going too far. What we call the initiative that we call the Montana Accord, when the proposition for the accord was being proposed, there were really two actors that were not in the initiative. The one was the 21st of December, and then the the and then there's another one which was like another French party just like Piastika and it is pretty much like it's like the same head and then they're just they're gonna change the body and they're gonna change the group for example of Daoud you know uh, with the curriculum now and as a facilitator getting ideas from core group and from other organizations we can see that the months they kept meddling so that they can nominate the Prime Minister Ariel, uh, Prime Minister Ariel. And, he, and since then, they're the ones who are working with the actors. Uh, they're saying to the actors uh, what to do, what they should do, what they should not do. There could not be a transition within a transition. Many times they said to Mr. Ariel, he has to organize the election. They know very well that he was not able to organize the election because exactly the third version of the PHTK, the political party, one of the things that they did was they did most is they massacred people, people who were living in the popular neighborhoods. When we consider like when the there was a change that happened with the mobilization and then um, where the people that were really working within the, the larger cities, um, the popular neighborhoods became this sort of a resistance base um, that was happening to tell people to stop. Um, and so the first organ that they used was oppression. And they really were massacring people. This is why we saw the La Saline, the La Saline uh, massacre, massacre a bunch of different areas. And and we're talking about in 2018 when was when this was the second version of the uh, the PSTK. And you know, it's the United Nations that actually reported this. It's not me. 
they were reporting the massacres that were happening even today and um with Ian Ernie's resignation, the carnage is still happening. They use the game as a tool, as this instrument to keep their power. And now the games are turning against them. And at this time, the gangs have turned against uh, them and against the people. And they're living, uh, especially uh, the people that are living in the popular neighborhood. So the so we need to figure out which actors are actually pay, playing this game. Um, so that, yeah, they can say that um, we cannot uh, work together. This was clear that it says that they were uh, they were able to come to a, to this crisis. There were lots of initiatives. They categorically said that they cannot have a transition within a transition. This is how we got into this plot. Since 2015, this plot has been there until today. And we said with boots, without boots, the occupation is present. Yeah, we may not see the boots on the ground physically, but the boots are basically in the meddling, the politics, the and the basically ingrained in our autonomy. Even the investments um, uh, in food that need to be done for the peasants, and only them, it's them that they need, that they did not want this to happen. And of course, with IMF, with their instructions, they keep getting their notes from the IMF. And one of the things that they did to break us, to keep breaking our backs, was to raise the fuel prices. And when they decided to raise the fuel prices to 400%, from 200 good to now 500 goods, this is the, an organized crime in, you know, in the IMF. And the IMF is the one who told them what to do. We were clear that this was terrible. We knew what was going to come up this. What did they do? They then also used the gangs to transport and contraband the gas. They, they created this chaos. The way that they did this was the way to, of setting the stage to, to have a war when they raised the fuel. So now they're saying that Car the CARICOM is putting us on the table. That's not true. We have to fight to the bone so that we can say that these are different, different proposals that we actually put on the table. They're using some propositions amongst the ones that we already made. They're trying to conceal that while selecting which ones they want to take and which one they want to leave. Now, if the proposition that we had from the different actors were applied, we would not have, we would have been out of this crisis already. We would not have been there. We would not be in this per perpetuity of different chaos and crisis. The ones who created the chaos, they're the ones who are still fueling the chaos. And then they're saying, oh, you know, these guys, these happy heads, they're thank the you, ones who do not you. need to be part of the conversation. Question there is nothing we can do um, with the them on the State continent. Department of they US have to continue exterminating us. That's the logic. The presidential council. They have to accept a military intervention. What do you think of this precondition? Before I answer this question, I want to go back to the previous question that you posed to Islanda. But when they said that Haitian cannot work himself, I think first, this is a racist, racist character eh, behind it. It reminds us of the 19th century French anthropologists like Joseph Arthur. They would actually say uh, they really link uh, knowledge and capacity with their uh, the people's color, their height, and their intrinsic value. Uh, in the same token, we cannot downplay the ideological question. There's different aspects of how they probably create different discourse of how they can actually try to sever ties with the country where The, they really drawn down the country with some measures that they think, meaning we are in a complex situation and they tell those people they cannot discuss because they cannot find a response in 48 or 24 hours. And those same people, they are the ones who were like a spokesperson for, for them. They were, they agreed 
they discussed, they agreed, and in 24, 48 hours, and now the core group has a different position. So there are people that they use them based on their interests. It's a ban, it's really such it's trivialization of the concept of politics. It, they're pointing a perspective of transition of rupture, but we don't have enough people to assume that. I think those things are important. When they say, I hate it, everyone who's there, they not care about the consensus. They are the people who have what the country where it is and those that are the spokesperson for those behind the, uh, the destruction. If today they agree uh, with Peashtika, it's because they have multiplied many actors within the Peashtika. They are here and they each uh, uh, have a different speech. And I think it's an element that is very impo important. I'm uh, talking about the intervention. Uh, a juvenile just died, and three days later, the prime minister asked for three days later. But in the letter that he wrote under pressure of the American embassy to really secure the strategic site. Ariel came up, they imposed him the same thing. And today, the profile of the people that are on the table, they're, you know, lemon and milk. So they're asking for their political sovereignty and they give you your post, but the post has a condition. Why the we really see, you know, during the 20th century, the actors that really managed the crisis of the army, army that were formed by the U.S. government. In 1986, we, we slept and we saw who came in, the army. So now they're relying on the bandits. One, the, okay, the bandits now, they are, they are censors. When people are out to for demonstration, the people in Lake Sali in in so this in February seventeen and November, so they stop the meetings in during the movement of nineteen eighty six. There we in the nineteen nineties had a lot of meetings and the people from the popular neighborhoods they came in they came together, so because of the work of uh, sensibilization, sensibilization that was done that we they criminalized the movement the social movement remember a uh, with Martelly administration remember with uh, yeah, uh, he suspended the state subsidy on fuel the uh, price of gas went up and when the people went out to port us then you see that barbecue got into the protest. Later on, you see the UN, uh, the Secretary General of the UN on France 2024, saying that the gangs are on the street. Today in Haiti, the local news on the radio may fall on their ears, but when it is on France 24, it is taken seriously. They play the role of criminalizing the movement. For the for the people take the street, they intervene. Bef now they now February seven February seven is coming up. Before uh, September, they started about a, when they heard about mobilization. They anticipated the crowd, and then and. Even if those people get onto power, they're going to tell you it's a drug info. They are a drug related people. In in 2025, they say they're going to hold election. They say people are going to get to the street. But who took the street? They're, it's their own people. They have um, they have a mission. 
they play a role to humanize the social movement because the army that used to uh, manage those crises because the police doesn't have now the capacity to break the demonstrations. Uh, things that went in 26 and 2018, we are in a, well, we have the impression that we have in a revolutionary context. What does that mean? Is the ability for the people that are controlling the economy and the politics of the country and abroad to contain, to contain to the, the social movement. That means they have to sit with the bandit. The bandits in our history, have always existed, but be, uh, but when we had the army, their rapport with the army was different. The army was the principal actor. Nowadays, gangs are the principal actor. Doing the occupation is about a, a, to discipline the gangs and to put together a, a repressive structure to really break the social movement. That's why, that's the reason why the American government is going to propose an intervention. When you look at Port-au-Prince, as a population, we have Delma, we have Quadebuque, et cetera. There's about 3.5 million people living there. Imagine a demonstration where Cité Soleil is out, Lazaline is out. Will the police be able to manage this the gang at that a uh, is there at uh, is there to control the population the most of people in the popular area are young folks and they have a uh, the men they have to keep them and the police by themselves cannot and the bandits they are a more and more autumn, a, they can they can take control. They put themselves together. They, for example, for example, like Shemisha, where they are located. They well, they have Vabanku, places that are making money. That mean that means they have money every fifteen days, every month. They don't have to a. If you go look at barbecue, barbecue is the is the, is the the port, and then iso it's a drug. Kanaha, they have to go out every day to do uh kidnapping. If you take the katsama also, because uh Kwadebuka doesn't have much going on, they have to create their own res resources, resources that will bring results for them. So there are things that you do after 15 days and month, you, you're not you're gonna run out of so they put themselves together. There is a, a kitchen and the kitchen and it, it there's a kitchen where they put themselves, but there are times they're not structured. So the intervention will structure the gangs to really a uh, reinforce the police. So the gangs are there to reinforce the police. So they're gonna put together structure really repress repressive so to kill any social movements in Haiti. Okay. I'm gonna go back to so we have to make a transition, a transition of structure. They they came out on July 7th, a month later, it November 18th. They, they are asking for a better life. They want to turn things around. They wanted to put into a society a, at the domination of a U.S. domination in Haiti, and they wanted to put an end to that. The intervention is very important for the core group, and especially the U.S. I'm going back uh, to Professor Suka. I'm lost. I'm lost here because we are asking a Haitian solution. They tell you if you to agree with the solution, we have to accept the troops. And we got into it. 
can you really give some light on this? Shed some light for us. It's not us. Those other uh, political representation uh, leaders, it's not us. Those people, they represent what they represent, but they don't represent the, the people. Something I want to bring back from what Eddie said. I don't like to use the term bandits. They're not bandits. They are terrorists. What do you lose in destroying a canal for the peasants? What does the bandit lose in destroying a hospital in, in, a, in a neighborhood that is... What does a bandit lose in destroying uh, the electricity company? What does a bandit lose from, you know, stopping the students to go to school, from the, from the teachers to go and, and teach? The bandits, a gang member, can go and rob banks, kidnap. But you, when you're attacking the structure of a country or what is left of it, it's no longer bandism, it's terror. You are at war against the country and you are at war against the Haitian people. And this terror is a terror that is well organized. Because of the work that I've done in the areas that are said to be lost territories, I really realized how, how the terror is structured, how terrorists structure themselves and how they spread the panic all around. It reminds me also the Makutis was structured during uh, the Francois Duvalier regime. For example, when we talk about a when we talk about Bloc, Bloc en Badelma, Bloc de, of Jeremy, Bloc Cité Soleil, etc. Each has a chief. And under each chief, they have an assistant. And each of these persons, they have their own cemetery. That means they go out when they want. They kill whoever they want. What are you, old, young, men, women? And we have somebody that will take the cadaver and will dispose of the dead body. And then they spray the body with um, gas and burn it. And the other part of the terror is exercise on women. And, uh, and when a chick is in the street and see a woman walking or a young woman, excuse me the expression, and ask you, have I done have I done you before? If if you said no, no worries, I will send two soldiers to go look for you. And if you're pregnant, you cannot have a have an abortion. They will kill you. And those children that are born, they don't take care of them. They don't send them to school. Now listen. Listen to what I'm saying. The biggest business that is they have a, there's a brain that is thinking about it. And it, the money is in the traffic of bullets and ammunition. The money for kidnapping, money of banks that have been robbed are using to buy ammunition and bullets. At times to make them with their bullet, they attack themselves for no reason. They make them fight against themselves. And the bullets, they come from the US. They come through ports, a, so, so, uh, ports that are held by the oligarchs or private administration or public administration. And that's not it. Those people, they have an accord with uh, with uh, international people that help them to structure and that are there to, to control them and also to uh, feed them and feed them with uh, with arms and lets and munition and keep yourself together. When the when when the, uh, a weapon is used. A lot. It has to be clean. Somebody that goes into the lost territory is someone authorized. And most of the time, they belong to the police. Those people, they come in. 
they put them in a house. They, they stay there for a week, seven, eight days. They are cleaning the weapon. They give them food. They give them to drink. They give them women. And every day they pay between five to six hundred dollars US every day. And every time they finish cleaning those uh, weapons, they return them. It, because the terrorist machine has to be functioning all time again the mass against the working class because the machine that is working is a machine of mass destruction it started by destroying by the the peasants the 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 the, the, uh, the economy but to salvation the middle class the working class and now the private sector they don't need anymore they're trying to bring them to win too it's a work of destruction mass destruction that is taking place so that they can control the country in for a project for brain for a brain that i have taught about this thing it's an act it's diabolical act that they can utilize their all the children of the mass against them. It's something that is came out of a brain that I cannot even qualify then. To really understand what happened, we have to call them by their name. They're not bandits, they are terrorists. They have their function. And what is what? Some of them have poor conscience that the money that they're making in kidnapping and breaking the law, they cannot even benefit from it. They won't have time to use it. They don't have any other place to go. They, they met so many people, they know so much, they have to die. To conclude, I, because I lost in the beginning, a, I would like to say, I would like for you to repeat the question so I can conclude. The question asks, do you think the condition that was put forth by Karakon as part of the, to be part of the presidential council, is it something that, is it okay? What do you think of it? What I, what I think it's evident, a, one person, you cannot be favorable to the creation of your own country. It's clear. And you see that question that you posed? The diabol diabolical brain that you're talking about really has trapped them. And those people and that I'm collaborating with in those people that are those, uh, in those uh, lost territories, I come to a point, this is not a question that we talk about anymore. It's because if somebody the trap has put them in a hole and it, they're ready to hold any hands that could help them out. And they will tell you, I would see afterwards. The trap makes them lose all their ability to analyze. The, the brain is really fucked up. This is what I say. Be, even by decency, I cannot do those. I cannot. I cannot do those things because they're going to ask me a question. Besides helping me coming out of where I am, what are you offering me to, to help me stop this machine of terror? What is the alternative? What we can put in front of this um, terror machine, that's a dilemma. That's a dilemma that the diabolical, diabolical brain has put you. You have to have a lot of conviction, a lot of pas pas patience and clarity to help this come out of this trap. Thank you. Now we have Mrs. Whitlin Pierre, a Take a time to, uh, we have another question for you. Uh, we know there's going to be a new government, whether it's a presidential council or something. 
else? Besides putting, bringing peace and security, what are the priorities that government should have? As you said, bring back peace and security is a it's a pri priority amongst the priorities. Right? Having peace and security in the country will allow us to function. Well, after the let us function, we have to bring ourselves together. We have to have some Haitians that are ready to nationally because we have to rebuild our country. We have to start from new bases. We have to sit down and say, like Professor Suka said, there are things that we will never go back to them. For example, Professor Suka said they are terrorists. They are so terrorists. What would have been the gain in burning our university? It's been 14 years since they, they, they have asked to build a dormitory for them in Damien. It was, it was done two months after the student, the bandit got them outside and they bought everything with them. What does a bendy have to gain in the science fac faculty? They, they just we are they just updated the building. There's something that we need. We need to put people that are really uh, responsible for this. We need to put them where they belong. I think it's very too easy. Everyone who has really done harm to the country and they never been con a questioned. So we have to put together a tribunal to really judge them and let them know the free ride is over. For those who have comploted with our enemies to destroy us, we cannot say that we're going to have an election. Yes, we are gonna have an, we're gonna need an election. We need to come back to normalcy, but we cannot just say we are just going forward frivolously. We have to have Haitians and Haitians that are real, that are Haitian really love their country. I'm gonna say it once more. We cannot build new on old. We must have something new. The experience can help us in rebuilding nationally. We have to start with a new leadership. Uh, we, are you going? We have to start with a new Haiti. Where are we gonna educate our children after we find peace and security? After we really open those canals, those like a, we have to start in the agricultural realm. After we have to construct a new Haiti, we have to have Haitian like when I knew it when I was small. I, the flag, the flag, there was a big day for me. Now I see people use the flag as as uh, bras, as uh, panties. The, my 18th of May was an 18th of May. We had, we went out on the street. We, sh we really chanced for our country and our love for the country. Those times, it, I remember the city. They said we had problems then, but now imagine what we have going now. We have all our brains that are leaving the country and we have the youth. All their dreams are to leave Haiti. Can we blame them? Can we judge them? We in the in in the past we could have done them, but now we cannot them we cannot Because it's a system that is trying to kick us out of the country. We know our na nation has 
wealth. We know we have a lot of, uh, of, of resources. I know there is gold where I come from. When I used, when I was small, I know uh, when I was a child, we used to go and buy, I knew of people who went to buy gold. So if everybody's leaving our country, how are we gonna exploit our resources? Those who want, those who believe in a new Haiti. Now I visualize, I sleep and I dream of a new Haiti. I know I'm living a new Haiti. I, I know I'm gonna live to say new Haiti. The new Haiti, Haitian who believe that we are a rich country, not with resources, but with culture, the value that we carry as a people, what we represent as a people, as in the eyes of the, the world, you cannot hide the sun with your hand. What we are, we already are. How is I've allowed them to recalibrate our brain. I see the Dominican Republic that is inventing history to say that they were big. Some uh, most of the time they take, take us at our adversaries. Uh, Spain who colonized them while, uh, while we fought for them to put them out and they glorified the Spain. When they speak about Spain, they, they talk about their motherland. They invent history so they can look big. We don't need that because our history is big. We are great people. We are a great example. Haitian is more than time, more than time to say never, never again. I was watching a pastor yesterday. He was crying. He said, I'm not talking to our yell anymore. I'm just talking to God. He was praying. He's saying to God, God, do you not see what they're doing to our people, young, our young children, our young girls that are being raped? Do you not see the misery of our, our people? But me, I always believe Haitian are the ones to save Haiti. We do not have to pose that question to God. We do have to introspect and say we have a duty, the obligation to value, to value our people, to to value our nation. And we have to make the respect. And we are the ones who can do it. Thank you. Miss. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna ask the last question to Madame um Madame Usanda, pardon, Madame Aduel. Et après ça, nous allons questionner le chat. Madame Aduel, et ça nous attend de what? Madame Aduel, I'm going to ask you. Based on what you've heard from Madame Woodlin, um, Professor Lucien, Professor Carl, I would like to ask you, based on what you've heard, what are your hope um, for Haiti in the next three years? Yes, we have hope and we will continue to have hope. There's no other place to have hope other than Haiti because exactly you all that are here, we cannot just be the ones that are um, that are here. We cannot just all leave the country, especially based on the immigration issues. People are leaving. So we know that. We know many of you across the ocean, um, you would want to come back and you know you can't. Um, I have hope because when we see why... Um, we're going to have the national uh, consensus that we're dreaming, that we start talking about it. We start to uh, really put the basis uh, and foundation so that we can really actually develop. We know that we, we have hope for Haiti. First, we have to say we have to do the national conference to define and redefine what we need for the country. Once we do the conference, it's not for um, three years. We're going to have to talk about Haiti. Um, we're going to have at least a project for uh, to go for 25 years. After uh, this national conference that we're going to define about uh, after that, 
so we can uh, continue to um, to have hope. We have to agree to have a process of the to to um, prosecute the crimes and the people that are in the popular neighborhood, um, the popular the crimes that are done against the popular the people in the popular neighborhood that actually are victims of gang violence and those kids. And we have all to find space, not only to to make them those people to hold these people accountable, those who create the 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 crimes, because then we know that they all supported those organizations that are giving these firearms. Um, we have to see also uh, the intellectual actors of those people. We can probably call this space the court of the people, but we have to only not only define those folks, we have to also, we have to also hold them accountable for their actions. And then we're going to continue when we actually um, have advocacy, when we have the power to say to Haiti that we, to see the Haiti that we want. We have to stop all the flux of the weapons that are coming um, from uh, the United States and through the Dominican Republic that are going to the U.S. Um, we also have to stop this border um, that where we know that Haiti is supplying 12% of the cocaine that's going to the United States by way of the Dominican Republic. We need to stop the link with the government, which is um, using their ties. We have to identify the ministers who are using their power to commit crimes. We have to hold them accountable. We also have to give space to the population so that they can actually bring their grievances, so that they can liberate their thoughts, their minds, so that people cannot continue to live this way um, with the consequences of violence, um, sexual violence. And those ladies, these women, I don't want to discuss one specific case, but all the women, the majority of the women that are displaced have been victims of sexual silent violence. And those uh, also, they're victim of those terrorist acts when we bring this Haiti for the 25 years that we're going to plan, we would say that we have a lot of things that are in danger. We need to create a base for the youth that are living in the country. Um, because those youths that are actually migrating, they really make them leave so that they can so they can come back and then explore the wealth that we have the gold wealth that we have in the country. We need to work for uh, towards forestation. Um, we need to, we need the people, for example, the peasants know what each plant represents. It's not the NGOs that are coming and then giving humanitarian aid that's going to teach us what we need to do. We know what we need to really bring forestation. We need to stand this educational system that will allow patients to really bring their conscience and their confidence in Haiti. And then going to fight, um, as the other panelists just said, that the consequences of the occupation are still here. We have to say no to the boots that are coming to the ground because we need this space. We need our country to live in it and to organize. And after, and I would say there is a lot of diaspora that are that have a lot of skills, whether they're in the armies and the police force, they have the framework. And I think um, that we can reinforce our institution this way. This is when Haiti is going to be uh, to need them. So that they can bring their contribution to Haiti so we can have the Haiti that we're dreaming of. This is what's bringing this webinar because we cannot stand idly by and say, hey, this is a lost cause. There's nothing we can do um, with Haiti. The objective of this webinar is to continue to really bring awareness and perspective because we cannot have all the layers together. We need to figure out how we're going to get out of uh, where we where it is right now. We have to organize the people who are conscious and know 
what's uh, going on and understand what's going on. People who are not responsible for what happened, the people who are still in discussion right now, they are still, they're all in the three versions of PHTK, of the PHTK party. We know that this is a violation since they're the ones who really dismantle this country and they introduce all the gangs to us. We knew this country was really going to be derailed. And unfortunately, there's still a lot of people supporting these folks since 2011. And so now the gang system is becoming more legal. We need to do better so it is possible for Haiti to be better in three years. If we talk uh, about all these elements that I spoke of, we need to actually decide with the national conference so that we can define how we're going to be free and autonomous, so we can defend the rights of Haiti. Thank you. Um, Professor Edzi Lucien, now we have this government and a lot of people are waiting for this nomination. Where are we with this question of nomination today? How is the country and where are we? We are in this context that is very complex. I would say where we all have all these claims that become secondary, where security becomes the first demand that we have, which means <clears throat> the real uh, social demands that we, sh we should have, we basically have them in the second phase. If we really were uh, to really have this government, a question of where we need to be in uh, to be in inscribed, we have to remember there is a context of where we should see the first American occupation as a plantation um, in, for example, um, uh, as a plantation in Cuba and uh, the Dominican Republic. They're pushing. They're going to push Haiti to go to the plantation. At the same time, they're going to really stop the dynamic of the peasants because of a lot of people are going to the Dominican Republic. This is a context where we, the people that were fighting, they're creating this condition so that the population can be displaced. The same thing, like in the in in the. Um, 60s, the people who went to Africa, to Canada, in the same way that the data shows that the American embassy in Haiti, they actually make it where people can go to IOM and they're going to send them to see um, maybe 11,000 youths, um, where they're going to see they're going to be seen in the popular neighborhoods. They're going to send them away, and then they're going to think that they're saying that the police cannot really uh, face the gangs. The, there's this politics. This is uh, where the Biden politics, for example, um, which is where the commissariat is going to make passport available for about 1,000 police officers. Police force that's going to, police force that's going to be under the Biden program. And then we have the youth. Maybe um, those are questions that we have to pose. All those people that were sent to the other countries, um, did they vet them? So this is something that's extremely important. We can also review the context of the rise and then also the weapons. The United States has more capacity to produce rice and it exports 45% of the rice business. And so Haiti is the second or the third um, importer of of rice. Sometimes um, we're going to see also these politics that's going to happen so that they can break these dynamics. In terms of the weapons, um, the way that the United States can make weapons, the question that we were asking right now, uh, for example, Mexico and Jamaica are facing this issue. And maybe there are other countries that are facing this issue where the Americans, um, they have so much weapons they are channeling them in a way um, to other places. For example, um, in Mexico, 2009, 2019, there are 2,000 weapons uh, that came, about 70% 70, 70 of them came from the United States. Um, this is very important that we cannot address this alone. We have to look at 
um, with other countries so that the day that Haiti is going to be back on track, we can discuss it with other countries. Um, I don't think that there's a country um, today that's not facing the issue in the Americas. This context makes the transition of breaking the ties, well, very difficult. But there are two elements that are extremely important. One is that no matter what they do, the people never went out and asked for occupation, which means that uh, they at least understand that. And um, they are witnesses um, to the meaning of the occupation. The second thing is in 2015, um, to commemorate the centenary of the occupation, the progressive organizations held many different conferences in Port-au-Prince, in several countrysides in rural areas. So this generation really shows they are a testimony of an occupation. They know what it means to have an occupation and based on the work that the progressives um, have done in 2015. Um, So this question can explain the terror, right? So all the occupations really have terror so that they can have the approval of this population, right? So we saw what happened before um, in 2000 and then in 1994, they, um, they killed um, uh, people in a church and then they massacred um, a lot of people in Gaboto. They killed... Um, the population is very, uh, basically, um, the social ministry, for example, and then they have to use terror so that the population can be so afraid that they're going to agree. And all the time when the population is not subscribing to that, you're going to see how what they're doing is not working. I think the next three years in the few, well, in the few years that will come, there has to be a force. One of the limits that we would say is um, when we read the Montana Accord, we see their guidelines um, uh, for negotiation, diplomacy, communication, mobilization. The first thing is that they did was negotiation, diplomacy, and communication. They did that. It's like a structure. It's like the interlocutor that can explain to the international community that Haiti can come out of this struggle when what's most important is the mobilization. The mobilization and also um, is something that is important is the popular education. They were going to do a referendum, for example, during Duvalier and this radio show went on around th three o'clock to explain to people what the referendum that Jean-Claude is doing about the government. Um, and since uh, they know the people didn't go and they said like about 90% said no, um, this is the situation why the people didn't actually go to uh, to participate in the referendum. These, um, these are tools that they can actually use so that people can be inspired. Today, you can see that this is a situation where people cannot go to the Montana Corps uh, because it's not all, it's not at all uh, the fighting tool today. We have two other elements that are important. We are in a situation where maybe it's very revolutionary because of the way that they actually want to stop, they want to rise up. We have this population. We have this population where, for example, they protest. Um, um, they never go in front of the embassy asking for occupation. So those progressive organizations have to continue to reinforce and create this force, this balance of power. Um, and we have to fight to go to the neighborhoods. They have to have the right, um, they have to bring the fight um, to bring the force in mass. And then the kids can go to school. We have to find a way um, for people to have the right to circulate for their civil and political rights. They have to have the right to protest so that they can have a minimum level. Um, we have to have this force and the proposition that they can actually do the work that they need to do. Thank you. We don't have so much time left. Um, we're going to ask uh, Michelle Sukar a question. We basically 
the um we just had this sort of a vision to show the capacity of resistance and what i don't see i don't feel right is that what are the who are the agents that are going to bring this message to to folks um i think for example i'm not saying that it's us but what are the mechanism that we see that can stop this disaster based on the vision that we just created professor sukar if you're going to war you have to have war warriors if you have warriors you have to train them and don't and um don't forget that in this terror that we were actually experiencing the first thing that the enemy is doing is that and it it is successful in it is that it is actually fighting the most and in the most popular way also so if it starts somewhere for example if you have uh, a problem um you call the police the national police and they won't have fuel they don't have fuel they don't have people they don't have then you have a problem but if you have people who go in front of the embassy because they burn their homes they will go they will give them fuel they will give them weapons and batons to go now if there are people workers who are actually protesting because they don't get paid well or they don't get paid for many years i promise you the national police will be there so um in other words the function that we call the tools uh the priorities of the government there's other energy it's not to defend the mass but it's to defend the interest specific interest uh actually split the equal different performing actors um their uh causes you have to inform and organize folks on it you have to be um sincere in the program where you you have to say that if, the same way that you have the right to evolve the system is not going to make you any gift the system is going to defend itself um and it's going to defend itself by every means it's going to defend itself with the police it's going to defend itself with the terrorist and if need be it's going to defend it's going to bring international forces that you have to be clear um with them so that they know when you're engaged in a fight and that doesn't mean that the, the victory will be tomorrow and that does not mean that you have a guaranteed victory because the way the saying goes as i said to my students um in for dimanche the prison there are many people that died in prison it's not because you're right that you're going to win you're going to win according to how you you're going to fight and that's what uh the training the awareness and the strategy that um understand the fight of a people never ends never even when you ascend to power and the enemy will not relinqu relinquish um look at what's happening to cuba after 60 years the enemy of the revolution ruined cuba's economy because they are never going to admit they're never going to admit that they're going to stand in front of them to say that they have the right to life you cannot stand in front of them to tell them that because it's only them that have the right to to life any country that actually um got, became successful there's some sort of conquest and um and i would say even for our country it has been very difficult in um it's very it's a fight that is every day and now it's becoming even more difficult um there's a lot of complicity 
And because we're not, um, we don't have a lot of people that are listening to give all the secrets. Um, there's certain things that we cannot say here. Is Linda, we're gonna gonna end with you. The same question. Give us some light. You presented a nice picture, but I don't see any leadership and a collective leadership in the sector that we are, in this language being spoken. We need uh, we see a leadership emerge in the PHTK, in other sectors, but uh, that are bringing solution for us. It's not a lack of leadership. It's the type of instrument that is needed. That should be the base for us. It's not because they don't have a lack of, of composition. Big people have been making those provisions for a while, but but the model, the models, the organization that are making those proposition for on behalf of the people, they cannot, they, they cannot be a labor for those people. That's the fundamental. So the first uh, PHTK version, the second and third, that those are the same version. So it's another version of PHTK. Everybody knows I'm at, I'm the leader of the co Haitian collective a, of the peasants. We doing Tatkole in the south. We, what do you call uh, four eyes? Kadje. It's different initiative that we that will that give birth to the a August thirtieth accord a way to say that we have made many strides and the people that are making those strides they don't need them how do you know we've been advocating for so long how many people how many children without fathers and how many people are living with cholera without being compensated in 2016 a, the United Nations acknowledged they has a mole death a, a, towards Haiti, and it stopped right there. The mole death, they have added more to it, and they haven't said how it will be compensated. A, well, the capacity we have to pose question when we are in certain space and and find answers. And when we really point out those people, they say they are the one responsible for our troubles, for our uh, pain. We are the ones that have been always been in the street when we had demonstration. We are the ones who have been uh, hit by uh, bullets. We're not, we're not their people. We're not their, uh, their games. So that's the reason why they're being out. Question is, are we going to get ourselves out of this political monopoly that the U.S. have established? Those are the questions that we're posing ourselves. So if you are one of those people that are posing those questions, they put you aside. They isolate you because they don't want you. This is what's happening. We have a, of the a national a nationalized that bring a uh, really a speech that is really different from what is really happened. And we saw with Pamela White, and there are people that we have to put them aside. There are people that are really involved in the coup d'état against a Jean Bertrand I said, and this person is a criminal carry a criminal and then this ambassador sit and talk with Guy Philippe. How do you understand a uh, Madame Pamela saying telling us to sit and talk to a uh, barbecue? Uh, when is 
when uh, Madame Lali is the one who faded again, and uh, also Mrs. Watt is now telling us we need to sit down with the Gins, and she, he's the coordinator of the Vivant Sam. When so those people, if they are saying those people, we don't need to ally ourselves with them. If you are posing those questions, they're not gonna be on your side. Thank you, thank you. With Lynn, we're gonna end with you uh, before we pass it be, uh, to Professor Asilian. I will then on mute. Thank you. I thank uh, Islanda is a young lady that I've worked a lot. I, I can tell you where I meet her. She have a lot of future in the country. Works, she work hard on the underground. If we are fighting, we have a bought many proposal. Those people, they don't need us. If we say we're doing it the Asian way, we have to use the people that we want to and impose and impose them. I know it's not gonna be easy for us. The manipulation is there. The, the, the courts that they enter in in our imagination make us hate each other and make us unable to sit together to speak and to each other as people of one country and to reach the population that you are defending to make them understand that you are fighting them for them we have to look for more people more people that are thinking uh, like us even those who are not fully thinking like us but who love uh, their country and who see the country and who have the same logic as us put haiti back on its feet Professor Suka said about the resources that we to do it uh, the Haitian way. We don't have the the resources. If we wanted the Haitian way, all Haitian need to understand what's going on. We need to mobilize. We need to understand, and we have to bring people to the fight for together so we can uh, make a, a a power to build power together. Because if we have a big majority, we have one objective, one plan. We put Haiti before everything to advance. I think it's going to be more practical. Uh, if we agree or agree about the intervention, if it's going to resolve our issue, how is it going to be when the people are on the ground? I am, I am convinced. We want to the national police, the army can resolve our issue of security. But, but there's a work that needs to be done in those institutions. We have too many police officers that are gangs. We and we have them at all levels. Anyone anyone that comes, I don't care where they're coming from, what type of intervention, and we can do it. And can those people can come and do it for ourselves? They don't know the country. They cannot go to those popular air neighborhoods. Somebody needs to accompany the national police that we have. That is really, uh, that is stinky. That is really bad. If it were truly a national police that were, that is, that was protecting and serving, we wouldn't be there today. And if this work is done, and we have good police officers. I'm not saying all a uh, only the 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 simple uh, officers. I'm talking at all levels. And I think we can bring a solution when even when we have the collaboration of other countries that will help us by bringing their expertise to the to the fight. But I think if we don't do it it's really we're working in vain i think the problem of haiti haitians are the only one who can solve i don't think any other nation can come in and solve this for us and we have to do it and we must do it because haiti will not perish haiti 
Haiti cannot perish. We have to do what we need to do. Many of us, I, I, I want to believe there are many people of good faith than are people that are really wanting bad for us. Uh, many of us, we are afraid of us. A lot of people don't want to talk. They want everybody to agree with them. If you say something else, they don't agree. A lot of people don't talk because they don't agree. They, have, they, they fear something. They don't want to really unnerve anybody. So what's happening nowadays, time for us to speak up. A, when I'm looking at a helicopter's any everybody's running to get on the helicopters. Nobody, no one is got no one life's guaranteed. Uh, this paradise has been turned into a uh, hell because of the complicity of bad actors. We have a possibility to bring it up together. All those people of good faith put our, ourselves together. We have to put ourselves together to bring Haiti back to its realm. I hope those type of forums will have more of them. Today, I met Professor A.D. and Professor Suka. I met for a short while with Islanda. I'm very happy with the time I spent with her. I saw a lot of hope and I see women too. The question of the Occident people telling us they're going to resolve our issue, our culture, if you recognize our value and our identity, we will know that women were always present in all fights. In the canal movement, I discovered a lot of women that I never knew about it. in artists like Annie Alert, in a, a, that the Dominican Republic has put an interdiction on her and is that doesn't say anything dr Bertil, that isn't that it doesn't even speak creole she put all this energy to really go into that fight a lot of other people a lot of intellectual a lot of people that are really really a uh, professionals and i'm waiting for the city I thank everyone. I thank you for the time that you spent. You answered the question. It's a big work that you have accomplished. I would like to thank uh, a, those who have uh, allowed me to moderate this panel. I'm going to pass the mic to Professor Axelien with the last word. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the panelists, Isanda, Michelle, Michelle Soka, and Michelle Parmiers, Edi, and Widley, Michelle Delicien, Widley Pierre, and yes, Professor Francois Pierre Louis, I was a moderator. A thank you to Rose Nicholson and Lud Lecon for interpreting for us. It's not easy. And I will also thank Joanne Julian, Julia Manira, who really blessed this uh, webinar. We say Aibobo and I appreciate the, the fight that our brothers and sisters is continuing to do in Haiti. Professor Suka said, the fight of a people never stop. It's an everyday fight. We're gonna continue to fight as an, uh, a, as an association take an engagement to really continue to share information. In April, we'll have another webinar that uh, will focus on the work of women and how women are living this moment. Thank you very much. And don't forget, you can support us, and our, whether you're in here or here, we want to continue this conversation. We are to in this fight together. Hi, Bobo. And we have closing Michelle. Uh, I want to just say hello. I want the space for the panelists. This is a really a speech of bravery and courage. I really, I believe uh, you. We bring hope for this country.
and so we see it for the government that they're putting in place we have a lot of work to do we here at the association uh, we con will continue with an, uh, other uh, discussion so we're gonna try to bring a program for us for you every month so we can continue with this debate we say thank you thank you everyone so for this work of education that we offered today, that is something that we want to do every, every day. Thank you for your courage.